Three, two, one. Hey everyone, Harry Welchel here. Today I have Alexandra with me, and we're gonna be talking about how Alexandra made her first two commissions for over $1,000 um, right. in about two months of us working together. So Alexandra, right. why don't you just introduce yourself and share a little bit more about your art and your background. Um, well, I'm Alexandra Saunders, and I come from a business background, um, but I did not uh, apply any of that um, to deciding to be an artist. I, um, when the pandemic hit, I decided um, I was going to close my company and do what I always wanted to do, which was my artwork. And as you can see, I'm older. And so people said, oh my goodness, you know, how are you gonna do that? You're older. And I said, well, I'm just going to follow my passion. So I started drawing and then I started uh, painting and I, I dedicated like eight hours a day um, so that I have my fundamentals down. And then I was giving away my pieces for um, donations to um, sanctuaries, to charities for wildlife. And then I saw, somewhere I saw your ad, I think, yeah. and I talked to you and I decided, well, why not? You know, I'll just give it a try and I'll see what happens and wouldn't it be cool if I could earn enough to pay for my art supplies or certainly to go on a trip or something like that. Um, so let, yeah, yeah, let's talk more about that in a sec. Let me ask you a little bit more though about you and your art and your, and your background. So uh -huh. like, how did you, and I'm genuinely curious, I don't think I know this yet, like how long have oh. you been painting? Like, had, is it, was it just that you, the pandemic happened and you decided to take up art or had you been doing it kind of along on the side for a number of years? No, I I grew up um, going to a lot of museums, and I always loved art, but um, it was not considered a viable career, and so I became a uh, scientist, and um, I was in conservation of natural resources, and then in the 80s, it was a very difficult um, decade for me, mm. and I lost a number of my members of my family, and so I went to the local museum just as kind of a grief to t handle my grief, and uh, there was a class how to draw bones, how to draw skeletons, wow. and so I started um, learning how to draw um, the skeletal remains of animals. And I would go there on Sundays, and I had my little colored pencils, and, and I, I loved it. But then um, I was in the business world by then, and, and so things took over, and I put my pencils away, and I hadn't touched them since the, um, the mid-'80s. Wow. So it's been 30, 40 years, <laughs> 40 years since I touched them. Um, but I always adored art. I always appreciated art. And so I've collected other people's works and um, not wildlife art, but I've always yearned to be, um, you know, thought, oh, wouldn't it be incredible if I could even meet these wildlife artists? And then, um, and then the pandemic was particularly difficult because for me, because I lost my company that I had, uh, it was a very successful company, it was a manufacturing company, and I had to lay off all my employees, and I essentially lost everything. Mm -hmm. And so I picked up my pencils again as a really grief journal, and I said, well, I'm going to do what I love most, which is, what do I love more than anything else in the world, and it's animals, and it's wildlife, and it's... Um, dogs and cats, and I'm going to learn how to draw them. So that's what motivated me. Oh, and I also lost my dog of 15 years at that time, and so I said, well, I'm going to try to draw her. So I have this little sketch of Bessie, 
um, that I drew and then I said well I'm gonna try a little bit more and then I'm gonna learn a little bit more and so I I really um, uh, yeah I spent eight to ten hours a day seven days a week just drawing um, animals in wow. pencil and then I decided oh, I was going to learn a little bit more because one of the things about me is when I decide to do something I go all in so <laughs> So I said, well, uh, colored pencils, there are ones that are available that you can, uh, uh, you can dip them in water and they become like watercolors. Hmm. And so I did a little per, uh, bird um, drawing and I made it a watercolor and I went, oh, that's kind of cool. And then I didn't know how to use brushes. And so I started buying some brushes and I started saying, oh, I was going to teach myself and it was a really steep learning curve for me. I decided. Yeah, I, I, I want to jump in real quick. So, like, you took those classes on skeletons in the 80s. And then yeah. more recently, how have you been learning this stuff? You know, how, is it I, on your I, own, YouTube, just imitating? I bought, I bought, I bought a lot of books mm -hmm. on um, animals and uh, their, you know, anatomy and muscles and um and then i went on i saw some things on youtube and started to draw a cat's eye it all started with a cat's eye really and <laughs> yeah one big cat's eye and then it was a horse's eye and then it was a tiger's eye and then you know i just said oh i'm going to learn how to do it from that and then i learned how to draw the nose and then i learned how to draw it's so smart. It's like you're breaking it down in a very small thing that's more manageable. Very, but still, even very, that is like probably yeah, pretty challenging. It. it was like <laughs> I just got lost in it. It was Zen, and um, and then um, in November, late November, I um, started thinking, well, I, I've got to teach myself how to oil paint because um, Harry, I'm I turned 75 uh, this year, and um, you know, most people kind of hang it up at that time. And for me, you know, I want to be, I, I not only want to be a really amazing artist, I want my pieces to hang in people's homes and people to really love it because I want them to be inspired to protect these animals and care about the planet. And so... I said, well, I have to do that through oil painting because that's what brings the most value. Mm. And also pe people seem to like that more than colored pencil drawings, even though my drawings, you know, will take 200 hours or, mo or more for one single drawing. Um, well, but well, people let me ask you this real quick. I'm curious, like, where did your passion for wildlife and animals come from? Was that from your time studying conservation and being a scientist or was there something else more to it that oh, really oh, got no. you? <laughs> it went back so I grew up actually I was born in the south like you. Okay. I, was, I came I come from Tennessee although you won't you can't tell by my accent. <laughs> so my father was a physicist and when I was a little girl he moved us to he didn't want us to grow up to be as he put it hillbillies. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so um I, I was born in Oak Ridge, you know, and it was still very rural there and, and isolated. It was the uh, Atomic Energy Commission uh, place. And so um, my dad decided he was going to move us um, to Asia. So he got a professorship at the University of Indonesia and he moved us to Java when I was a little girl, uh -huh, when I was like six years old and so I was just you know there we would go out into the rainforest and so I you know I I uh, orangutans and forest elephants and javan rhinoceros and all of these I saw as a little girl and birds and so I just learned to you know I was exposed to them and I fell in love with them and and um, I had all kinds of pets of course I think I had 30 guinea pigs and like 30 mice at one time, laboratory mice. So it just grew from there. So That's awesome. <laughs> so, 
Yeah, so I care about I, you know, the I I adore wildlife and and nature and the earth and and I'll do anything to try to protect it. So, so what do you think makes you, you know, unique as a wildlife artist? Um. Well, I can tell you what. I think makes me unique, but what other people say is something, for me, I think it's that I pour all my passion for, uh, for that animal into the portrait. So I really, it's, it's something that happens, it's not intentional, it's just I can't help it, it's like I go down a rabbit hole with you that. You bond with the animal. I do. I bond with that animal, and um, and then what other people tell me is that when they see my pieces, they're drawn into them. They they love the it's the eyes, but it's also they feel like they they see a, a, a an individual, a being there. So uh, there's a sculptor. Um, that lived at the turn of the century. Um, His name is uh, Bugatti, and he was known for these extraordinary sculptures, Um, but what made his, of animals, but what made his work so incredible was that he sculpted, these were portraits of actual animals. Mm. They weren't just a species, they weren't just some you know, some animal. of his imagination. Ab- absolutely not. So, um, uh, so I was really. I read his biography, and I actually went to London. Took a, a flight to London just to go to uh, this art gallery who um, collected. He, they have more pieces of his than anyone else, and so um, I was really inspired by. He him. sounds like he's I a am- big inspiration for you. He is, yeah. He is a big inspiration for Is he me. a conservationist as well? Um, no, he, he lived, um, he died when he was only 30 years old. He actually committed suicide. So oh. it's a sad story. Yeah, it's a very sad story. Um, but um, he, um, he came from the Bugattis, the Italian family that Car- uh, cars and, yeah. and the yeah, and so his family were very, you know, already quite prominent. Um, but his his work, you know, it's collected by museums all over the world, and it's, it's it's just extraordinary. And actually, I did do some sculpture. Um, I tried sculpture about five years ago. I hired a master sculptor to teach me. Mm. Um, but. <laughs> That was, that's, that, I mean, I learned how to sculpt a horse, but I decided I prefer the clay. I love the clay, Uh and I didn't want to turn my pieces into bronzes, so, because they're hard, you know, I just wanted my pieces to stay as clay, and apparently you can't sculpt clay, and it won't last, so, (laughs) so, uh, so I do that for myself. But it helps me understand the anatomy, so when I'm painting, it's like I'm actually sculpting the animal on canvas. That's amazing. I could totally see that, yeah, being the case. That makes a ton of sense. So, well, Alexander, let's, like, switch gears for a second. Let's go back, try to think back to, like, the month or two before we got connected. Yeah. Remind me, like, what were you doing then before you were working with us? What was your day-to-day life like as an artist? What were you trying to do to generate clients, if anything? Well, I was trying to forget about business. Yeah. Um, so anything, you know, raises the shackles on the back of my head. Um, I just, you know, I was really um, downtrodden about business, and I didn't want to talk about, I didn't want to even think about sales or anything like that. So I was in my mindset, it was in a very bad place. And I was, my art was really an escape, really an escape. Um, But now um, my art is, um, it's, I mean, I I still escape 
into it, but it is um, something that I'm excited about showing. And I feel, I feel like my age is not a barrier to me showing it. You know, yeah. I don't, I, I don't. Before we met, I felt like maybe time had passed me by, um, and that my art would just be with my friends or people that you knew. Um, but I don't feel that anymore at all. That's awesome. <laughs> and, yeah, so that means I'm all excited about being able to show it and being in the community of artists. Yeah. So when That's you were really when you were important. before we were working together like it was an escape for you. But even as it was an escape for you, was there any part of you in the back of your mind that was like nervous about, okay, when am I going to, like, how am I going to make this and make a living from this? Or how am I going to pay for my supplies? Like, what were your frustrations it, or worries yeah. at all at the time? It did. I was shocked to learn how little money colored pencil artists, the really, the really the amazing artists, the best ones, and also the graphite artists, these are extraordinary artists and how little they charge for their pieces. I mean, you know, they'll work 100, 150, 200 hours on a piece, and they'll charge $400, you know. I mean, so it's just pennies. So the business part of me said, well, that's pennies on the, you know, that's pennies an hour. An hour. <laughs> yeah, no wonder artists starve to death, you know. Um, and it did a it did worry me that I also spend that much time on my drawings, and even if I could sell it, you know, there's not, there's not a lot of demand for them. Yeah. yeah. So now I'm not worried about that. I've actually discovered a few colored pencil artists that sell their pieces for quite a bit of money. Good. Uh, so um, it's just you don't hear about them. You know, they're not on the internet. You can't. I mean. You, you would you wouldn't know about them unless you're into that genre. I see. Yeah, it's like sometimes the people that have the most fame, whatever wherever it might be in galleries, social media, they may not actually be making as much money as you might think. It's kind of counterintuitive sometimes. <laughs> exactly. Know? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let me let me ask you this too. So like, like what else? Were there any other like frustrations or worries or things that were in your mind like back before we were working together about the art practice and where it was going? Oh, well, for me, I mean, so many artists, um, classically trained artists, they have, they come out of college, they have, or the uh, art school. MFA degree. They have an MFA degree, they have exhibitions, they have, you know, you just, it's a mile long and really amazing. I mean, they're amazing. But also, if you look at your, the CV, it's very, very intimidating. At least it was for me, because let's face it, you know, I don't have 20 years. I mean, if I live 20, year, 20 more years, what will I be? I'll be 95. So if I live 30 years, which many artists, I mean, starting out, of course, they're 30, 40, 50 years. I don't have that time. So what am I supposed to do? Wait to get exhibits like that before I go out and, you know? Put in, so put, in, just, put in five years, 10 years, hoping for that break or something like that. Just yeah, so yeah. I mean, I'll be an 85-year-old woman by the time, you know, <laughs> by the time certain doors open for me, possibly. Right. So I don't, have that, I don't have that fear anymore. That's awesome. Well, let me ask you this then. So, like, where did you first hear about us? Do you remember? Uh no, I, you know, I don't. I don't know if it was on Instagram or YouTube or it was one of those. Uh -huh. It was one. Of those. Do you remember, but, like, what kind of piqued your interest at the beginning? I know it might be hard to remember, but what piqued your interest in what we were doing? The people that other people were making so much money a month. They're having success. That's a lot. Yeah, I mean, I still come from the mindset that, um, I mean, I live in California where things are out in the Bay Area outrageously uh, expensive. And it seems that, you know, if you earn, before, if you earn $5,000, you could live. You cannot live in the Bay Area on 5000 a month. You can't. Wow. 
Wow. And uh, you can't, you can't, you're lucky if you can even live for 10000 a month in the Bay Area, at least, you know, be able to afford things. So um, I thought, well, well, I certainly want to hear this. You know, it's worth my time listening. Um, so that's what piqued my interest. Cool. So let's talk about this some. I know that we've been working together for about two months. There's been a lot of things that we've covered. But like, right. Alexander, just for those who are listening in, what are like one, two, three highlights or, or takeaways or insights that have been helpful to you in terms of making those commissions and making those the progress you've had so far? Well, the, the number one thing for me is um, all of the information that you have on mindset and um, really um, evaluating internally what's going on in our head and what conversation um, you need to rid yourself of or other conversations. I mean, if I go years back, I've gone to all kinds of trainings, but honestly, it was just to sell the trainings. I never felt that they were authentic. And this is in sales and in marketing. Um, your your uh, what you've put in there is very authentic, and it's not it's not theoretical. It's actual. What I love about working with you, Harry, is you say, like, if I have a question or if I have a problem, you don't just say, okay, you can do this. You say, let's get on and figure it out together and do it. Right then. Right then it's done. And so, for me, I love that. And then the the, um, uh, the next thing that's the most powerful me, uh, powerful for me is hearing the way that you communicate with other people. So um, I can learn that. I haven't learned it yet, you know, but I can learn it. I can learn how to defer converse, uh, conversation about pricing, for example, and how to make it very um, a casual conversation, not a formal business conversation. I like that. I like that part about learning how to engage with people authentically. Yeah. That that is huge. That yeah, because it's really it's really about in um the thing that I've learned with you, um, which is most important, it's really about it's not about selling a commodity or selling a piece of art. It's really about um um enhancing that other person's life with your art and that's huge it's a big mindset shift right <laughs> it's a huge mindset shift yeah it's a huge mindset shift and there's and all these I, like tactical details and strategic details that flow from that right it just totally changes how you approach conversations with with people yeah sense. yeah and there are things that i have to learn how to put into practice but I love the fact that I can go and I can listen again and again and again. And, and you know, I've taken vociferous notes and uh, so that I can, so it can become my own, my own words, my right. own language. Yeah. That's amazing. I, I love it. And I think you're totally right. Like we are just getting started, right? There's so much more for you to still absorb and learn. And it's still cool to see that you've gotten these wins just getting started. And, um, if you don't mind, like, I'd love for you to share a little bit about just the anecdote of like how you got these commissions, because I think it's just such a fun little story. Do you mind sharing a little bit of the specifics of how that happened? <laughs> well, I'm, yeah, it's, it's easy. I mean, I'm so excited about uh, my art, um, and I'm so excited about the privilege of being an artist. It's really a privilege to do this, um, and that... And one thing, my groomer that uh, for my dogs, um, she's been my groomer for about five years. And off and on, I've shared some of the pieces uh, that I've drawn. And she has said to me, oh, my goodness, you have to draw this dog. Or, oh, my goodness, you have to draw that dog. So I had to take my dog in uh, to be groomed. Um, I think it was last week or the yeah, week before. Yeah, last week. Last week. And um, so I thought, well, 
I'm going to, some of my pieces are finished enough that I can show Melanie. So I'll take Blossom in to be groomed and I'll just show her some pieces. And she was just beside herself, just loving what she saw. So I took, you know, a painting of a dog and a painting of a Siamese cat. And a, I think I took, oh, my chimpanzee, a painting of my chimpanzee and, um, and, and of my owl. And um, she was just beside herself, and she says, oh, my goodness. Um, so actually, I got more than two commissions. Um, I got um, a demo out of it, too. So she first said, oh, there is this dog. She said, the owner is so, I've already told the owner about you, and she wants, she wants you to paint a portrait of Sasha. And Sasha happened to be there. Wow. It's gorgeous dog yeah and so um so that was already a done deal that was just like here you go alexandra please paint sasha and um and then as i was petting sasha um another groomer came up to me and she says oh alexandra she says i want you to paint my dog for me she says i really she says, I, 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 you know, I really, you, I just want you to do her as soon as you can. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, well, you want to see some of my work? She says, oh, no. She says, I've seen your work. And I am just, she says, I've been thinking about this for months. I want you to do this, please. Wow. And then as I started to leave, uh, Melanie said to me, she stopped me and she says, let's do a pop-up. She said, you could be painting here. And she said, you can paint for, she said, you can do like, she said, I'll do a shout out to everyone. And I'll tell all my clients that you're going to be here and that they need to come down. And so I, I, uh, so I got the two commissions and yeah. then I got um, the pop up, which is coming up in a couple of weeks. I'm just waiting for my new easel to come. So my, um, um, my, I think, what is it called? See, I don't even know the proper term. A plain air easel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, what so I love I, so much about this little story is it's like, um, you know, it, it almost sounds like, oh, like that, that was lucky. But it's, it's not that. It's like, I think there's so many opportunities out there in front of artists every single day that are kind of staring them in the face. And often they just don't have the right mindset or the communication skills to be like open and receptive to when this like abundance comes into their life. And it's just so amazing that you, I think maybe some of from some of the work you've been doing just felt really comfortable receiving that and like taking advantage of that. Any reaction yeah, or comment on that? I do. You know, it's really, it really is a mindset shift between scarcity and being excited about what you're doing and the abundance and people it's infectious people people see it and they love it and they they want it yep and um i mean and you have to so be comfortable like letting it go of control like like if you would come in and you're like well no like harry says that we're going to do facebook first or like hey we have to do things online or like if you were like too white knuckle about your plan it's like that opportunity could have passed you by but you were like open to it and receptive to it and then right. basically that's that's the beauty of it is like you're just there's serendipity that can come into your life if you're if you're listening for it, if you're attuned to it, if that makes sense. It's, it's really true. So I have another friend that owns, um, she owns a store uh, which is called East Bay Nature and she sells like bird seed and hummingbird feeders and all these things. And she's an established clientele. And I was just um, uh, joking with her over the phone the other day and I told her she asked me what I was doing and I told her and she says oh, you could do a pop up at my store she <laughs> said you come in and I'll tell all my clients that you're coming so um, yeah so it's you're about to cool. be busy <laughs> I'm about to be busy yeah I am <laughs> no I love it I love it and it's like um, I think the other thing to add just like kind of analyzing what you're sh sharing is I think that that new fire and that new confidence and that new passion not only for your artwork but it sounds like sharing your artwork with others I think that also is key to this because it's like that's why you went to the groomer and you brought the paintings under your arm it's like because you want to share it with people you want to share it with the world and so it's that combination of like getting comfortable and confident to share what you have 
sharing your message, sharing yep. your voice, and then just being receptive when the world says, hey, we want more of that, or like, hey, we want to work with you on that, and being able to be open to it, if that makes sense. It's, it's really true, and one other thing, I think I, I put it into a win that happened to me since I've met you, um, and that is that um, this abundance, this mindset. So one evening, um, I was, I forgot where, but I found out that Alameda County uh, Fair is happening this year. In, and it's late, it's in October. And they normally have these art, these amazing um, uh, paintings and photographs and everything. It's nice to have one's work appreciated. Oh, my, my iPad is... <laughs> we got another guest of the interview. <laughs> <laughs> Siri. Anyway, so... Um, so I saw no, that... Don't worry. <laughs> everything all right? I saw I saw that um, um, there was a competition that was open, and I thought, oh, you know what? I, you know, it's it's local. Instead of me putting my stuff on Instagram or whatever, it's local, and you know, so what if people? If I, I mean, maybe they'll, maybe somebody will like it. So I took the risk of entering the first competition ever mm -hmm. and I was just stunned uh, two weeks ago just stunned when I got an email and they said I took first place <laughs> and Didn't you I say just, you, you almost thought the email you were gonna delete the email before opening I was it. <laughs> gonna delete the email because I thought it was you know trash uh, <laughs> I was just I couldn't believe it and that's all from that just be willing to to put it out there and and not worry about being sanctioned or people saying, oh, who does she think she is, you know, right. or whatever. It's just about putting it out there. Totally. And so that's a, that's, a, that's a huge, huge, huge step for me. I love it. That's awesome. So, yeah, what areas of your, your life or, you know, personally, professionally, do you feel like have improved since we were working together? Oh, <laughs> most people when they reach 75 I mean everyone that I know that reaches 75 they're, they're, they have family or they have kids or whatever and it's just all about them and it's kind of on the downswing playing bridge you know and <laughs> yeah you know and it, that couldn't be further that, that would be like hell on earth for me if I was forced to do something like that you know it would just be awful so um no, it would be worse than awful. It would be, I would be one of those, oh, it would be horrible. And so, so seniors have this horrible, there's an end point, there's a point where your life declines. And I'm sorry, I'm just not willing to go there yet. So, <laughs> so I want to, so I've got this huge life in front of me. And I'm just, I'm ecstatic. You know, I'm, I feel like, I'm, I feel like I'm in my 30s again, where cool. I've got my whole life in front of me, yeah. and and I've got so much to um, to 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 do to help um, with conservation, you know, and help this plant. I'm so concerned about what's happening to our planet and climate change and all. So I feel like I can actually be an important contributing human being to help, you know, to s figuring out a Do solution. Your, your part, your small little part, you know? My small little part, yeah. So it's taken me my whole life to figure out what I wanted to do, <laughs> what I wanted to do when I grew up. It's taken me my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, yeah, it's, it's, it's exciting. This is, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's like a beautiful new chapter of your life is unfolding, right? You're on page one of this new chapter. So I exciting. am. I am, yeah, yeah. So, like, I was joking with you. I can start a, a an Instagram account saying somebody forgot to tell me that I was seventy five, you know, and that <laughs> life is over. <laughs> That's but awesome. I, I don't, I don't want to be a motivational speaker, so I'm not going to do that one. <laughs> go that route. Well, do you feel like you've gotten 
a return on your investment so far? Oh yeah, I'm, I definitely do. Harry. I I would recommend your program a hundred percent. Absolutely, it's it's really fabulous, and I love I love the part especially that you make yourself accessible uh, to everyone. That's so important. You know, it's not just a cookie cutter program. I, pre- I appreciate that. That's awesome. So, like, yeah, like on that note, like thinking back to when we had our sales conversation together, do you remember, like, why did you decide to do business with me? Was there anything that kind of like, kicked you over the fence? Um, it's that you had, yeah, um, your first artist, that he had real results. And um, results speak to me. You know, it's not about, if it had just been consultants, then it would have been a little more obscure. obscure right. for me. Um, but since it's specifically about art, um, that was important because I, I don't have, 300,000 followers on my Instagram account. I don't have 500,000. I don't even have, you know, on on my Facebook, I don't even have a thousand followers. So for me, I just, um, I needed to be able to figure out a way to, um, I wouldn't say justify uh, being in art because I'm going to do do my art no matter what uh, but I would say it, it was just it it tickles me pink to think that I can actually earn a living from this yeah I mean Absolutely. that's that's huge that's that that is huge for me because I don't have a second you know I don't have a back door here <laughs> there there is no back door for me this is the only place I have, and um, and that's you know that, and I don't have time to waste to try to figure it out either. So that's why, you know, I listen to the videos. I listen. I try to participate. I'm trying to learn as much as I can because I don't want to waste any time. Yeah. You know, I don't have any time to waste. Yeah. No, I love it. I love it. I think it's such a testament to you and your 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 discipline and your your passion and just drive. Like, I mean, I feel if if you can do it, like I think anyone can do it, right? If they just put in the work, you know. <laughs> yes, yes. And I had a lot of attitudes about that I hadn't made it. That I was seventy five. I just lost my company. I just lost my entire life savings. I just lost everything except my home and my husband. (laughs) So, yeah, my dogs. Um, (laughs) But, you know, uh, anything tangible, I mean, if someone were to look, they'd say, oh, oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, that's terrible. Um, But um, for me, you know, it's like I have everything I need now. I mean, I know that I have like a life back, which right. is incredible. Yeah. Yeah. It's like um, a lot of people with all that adversity that you faced last year with the pandemic and stuff. Yeah. They could have just said like, I'm just going to hang everything up. I'm just going to retire. Yeah. But it's like you somehow were able to channel that and like, look at the positive in it and like turn it into a rebirth. Right. And it's just amazing to see how optimistic and positive you are, you know, in the face of that coming off of it, which is exciting. Well, well, it's just, you know, I mean, it's really hard to fail with a pencil and paper. It's really hard. There's nothing between you and that pencil and paper. So everything that you put down right. is real. It's, it's just real. And so um, all that, all that uh, distraction all those shiny objects, all that is all gone because it didn't matter. It was just gone. It was wiped off. It was a totally fresh. So so in a way it's like you had all this extra space, like mental space, time to like really dig into your art and make this happen. I did. Yeah, I did. 
that's all I had, you know, and other people I know, they went, oh, the pandemic, and I'm isolated, and I'm here alone, and I'm, I'm like, oh, my goodness, you know, I'm just in heaven. I am, I'm in heaven. So, yeah, so that's I cool. feel, uh-huh, yeah, so well, I'm so really. What sort of um, artists do you feel like we're especially a good fit for? Oh, artists that artists that are going to when I, I, I don't want to say put the work in because um, it's not work what it is is it's focus it's focus and it's they they will listen and they will learn so um, an artist, any, it doesn't matter what genre, any artist that wants to um, put in the time to learn, they can't help but um, have, be, have their lives better because of this. It's not a waste of time. It's a huge, huge benefit to anyone who has these skills that you're teaching us. And I think, um, what would you say, like, I think for a lot of artists, the ideas and the methods I teach, I think it's, it's very safe to say that they're unconventional. So you can come in as an artist and you're like, is this really going to work for me? Is this really a fit? Is it really going to apply? And you would just say, is like, absolutely, like, keep pushing through and then you're going to have these mindset shifts, right? Like, can you speak a little bit to that? Yeah, it's really true. I mean, I can look at, um, oh, I'm sorry. I can look at I can look at um, galleries, and I can look at very prestigious New York New York competitions and everything. And I can get into the mindset about, oh my goodness, you know they they don't know who I am. I don't have the CV. Pining, yeah, pining after them, being like, if I could just get into that that yeah, know, I'll be set yeah. or whatever. <laughs> and and totally ignoring all the opportunities that I have in front of me. And so it's really, um, it's really important. I, I forgot what your question is. <laughs> the but, question was uh, just about how, you know, I think you were just saying all this great stuff about you can't help but benefit and have your life be better because of it. But if you just focus and learn, and I was just commenting on how I think a lot of my methods are unconventional. And so I think uh, some artists come in and their first impression is like, is this really going to work for me as an artist? Like, I don't, I don't, I don't see it yet. They can't quite connect the dots right away, but the more they sit with it, the more it just like, it just clicks one day and they're like, oh my gosh, this is, I, it, I get it. It's going to work. It's, it makes sense to me. You, you see what I'm getting at? I, I do. Um, I think why your methods are so important is because, um, it's not about a sales script. It's not about a domino or a gremlin. What it is, is it's about being authentic and looking and understanding what the other person is saying and being in alignment with them and not having to uh, have it... Uh, be a an outcome where you sell a painting it's not about that at all it's it's really for me what i've learned is it's really about learning to focus in exactly on what is being said and being able to just talk with them as another human being right and see about is there a fit and other and if there's not a fit just letting let, let on it plenty of fish in the sea on. <laughs> because as you said there's an abundance there are billions of people it doesn't have to be that person buying right. from you right and that's a huge a huge huge shift no i love it i love it so why should an artist who's listening Take action right now. Um, I don't think, unless you're Harry, <laughs> I don't think 
these this comes naturally. I think this is uh, these are skills that are need to be learned. And so an artist, just like I need to practice this and understand it and really internalize it so it becomes very natural. Um, and I think every artist can benefit from that. Yep. No, I love it. I love it. It's like, a, I mean, even for me, it wasn't a natural thing. I had to learn it. But it's like anyone can learn it. It's not rocket science, but it just takes having somebody who can show you the way. Right. And like you said, it's like it's like building muscle memory. It's building habits. It's internalizing these new things. And it's it's almost like it's like when you probably first picked up a paintbrush. There's certain exercises or strokes that you learn or little studies what? that you would do. Or if you learn a musical instrument, you learn how to play the chords first. It's like you need someone's help to get those fundamentals in place. And it just makes all the difference in the world. It, right? it really does. I took a class, a wonderful class from um, online class from a UK artist um, he's using graphite and he was saying he was talking about how working with uh, graphite and pencils is really muscle memory and it you have to do it over and over and over and over again and then it just becomes natural um, but at first you know it's very it's very awkward it's very uncomfortable to move move your hand a certain way or make certain strokes and the same thing with painting the same thing with working with brushes and working I work with oils so it's all about muscle memory so I um, with what you're teaching I remember that it's all about muscle memory yeah. and even though if I even if I'm not practicing it with someone I can still be reading it. I can still be saying it to myself. I can and still. Don't you sometimes you listen to it while you paint, right? I listen to it all the time while I paint. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I listen to it all the time. And actually, you just reminded me of something that I um, had forgotten that I did. Um, this is in my 20s. Mm -hmm. This is before the internet, before technology, but it was hugely impactful for me. I was going through a really um, rough spot. I had, uh, again, um, there had been some deaths in my family. And so um, I forgot someone, a psychologist or someone taught me how to do it. So I was really down on myself. And um, I needed to get myself out of that. So what I would do is I would, oh, I was in a very competitive business. I was in the commodities market and I was right. working in a bullpen and so what I would do is I would pick up the phone and we have message machines and I would pick up the phone um, and I would leave a message for myself on the message machine so in the morning every morning when I had to go into that bullpen and I had to put on my business face it was something like um, I would say on the message it went something like Good morning, uh, good morning, Alexandra. Today's going to be a wonderful day, and it's going to be wonderful because of this, 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 and this. And don't you forget it. And you know, I would give myself a little pep talk like that. It's like an and affirmation. It's awesome. It, yeah. So every morning when I got to work, and I would go, you know, and I would check my messages, and I, there would always be a message on my phone from me. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's so cool. So, so hearing my voice somewhere, I heard that when you hear something with your own voice, it's much more powerful than if you hear it in somebody else's voice. And if you like made the message the night before, you sleep, you come back, it's almost like it sounds like a different person in a way. Yeah. It's like you've gotten some distance from it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So. That's cool. That's yeah. cool. Well, let me ask you this too. So like, what is your number one piece of advice for artists? Um, there's always a start. Everybody needs to start someplace. They always, the people that have gotten huge successes, they started at the beginning too. Yep. There's, there's always a start and it's at the start where you take the little baby steps and you learn 
you learn to do something and by having one success you'll have another success and that you can't you cannot fail um, by um, taking these steps I love it that's such a good message I think you're right it's like anybody who you look up to you admire it's like they were at your point in time at some point in their career right and before that they were at they hadn't even started their career and it's just like I love that message. It's such a refresher to just remember, yeah, like everybody starts at some point, right? And everybody just, starts. What separates you from them, it's like they just, they just started walking down that path. They just kept taking steps. No matter how yep. you know, rocky the path was or steep or whatever, they just kept putting one foot in front of the other, if that makes it's sense. It's just one foot in front of the other. Yep, it is. And, um, and the fact that, as you say, you know, the world is really abundant. I mean, it is full of people that are excited about purchasing art and purchasing items. Um, there's a lot of money being spent out there. And so why not our Have art? I've heard of, um, I, I love the idea of like, there's like the economy or the, the money that you're talking about. It's like a river, right? And the river is flowing. Yeah. Right. And so people that learn about business, it's just they learn how to like wade deeper into the river and, yep. you know, sluice off a little bit of the, of the water, right? Yep. And the water keeps moving around the economy, you know, it doesn't stop with you, right? Right, so. <laughs> right, it doesn't stop. And if something happens, I mean, the world can just keep on going on. It can keep on going on and it's not, it, it will go on with or without you. So you might as well you know, participate. Get involved. I mean, right? <laughs> yeah. The world's so much better. It's like for everyone yeah. like you, Alexander, it's like literally the world is an objectively better place because you are figuring out how to get your art into people's lives, into their homes. In, in, you're touching people. And it's like y your art is valuable whether, you know, it's special to you, whether someone buys it or not. But there's just something about getting it out there and allowing it to make someone else's life better, which just 10x yeah. is the value of what you're doing, you know. Not like on a financial level, just like on a just on an emotional, human, social level. If that makes right. sense, right? Right. It just it just makes the the world a better place. So, yep. you know, it just um, yeah. I, I I will go back to. I mean, there's so much sadness. There's so many problems. There's so much um, conflict going on. And with art, it's so beautiful. There's so it's just so incredible. It's a signature of every single person that's an artist. And so, and it's meant to be. I mean, it's not, didn't happen by accident. Yep. Yep. Exactly. So I love it. This is awesome. Well, yeah. thanks so much. And uh, we'll talk soon, Alexandra. Thank you. Talk soon. Bye, Bye. Harry.